Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And to all of my returning OGs, what's up, y'all? So welcome to February 2020, yeah? A very, very happy birthday to all my Aquarians out there. And I also want to wish a happy birthday to the February Pisceans. We will be moving into your season next, yes? So um, with that said, I do want to mention, first of all, I want to say that this is the intro and you will find a, um, a timestamp pinned in the comments section that will get you straight to the reading. So if you're watching multiple readings and you don't want to listen to the intro over and over again, you can use that timestamp. I do recommend, however, that everybody listen to the intro at least once because there is some information that you may really need or may be privy to, may want to be privy to, that you would miss had you not listened to the intro. Yeah. So with this being Aquarius season, I do want to mention that the reading for Aquarius could very well be a collective energy, a collective reading. However, it is intended to be for those who are looking for guidance guidance for the sign of Aquarius because we are in that season. I do feel like this could be a reading for you generally. So maybe you might want to watch that reading just to see how it applies to you and what it could mean for your life moving through Aquarius season, just like I did with Capricorn last month, um, even though I did mention that maybe I wanted to do a separate reading so that your readings don't get hijacked with collective energy. Hi <laughs> um, it didn't necessarily happen that way this month. I'll see. Um, but if you guys if you guys find that you know you might want an actual reading please let me know for the month of, or for the season that we're moving in i would love to know i'd love to hear that from you yeah um okay so these these readings are general and they are timeless so because they're general readings um you know just take what resonates everything is not going to resonate for everyone and this may not even be the reason for you if if you're hearing listening to this and it's just not fitting it's not making sense then please don't try and fit anything into your life that doesn't belong there naturally okay and also keep in mind that this is a general reading i'm channeling for thousands of people so um you know not everything is going to necessarily resonate with you all the time okay so just keep that in mind also these readings are timeless so just because it is dated for the month of february and i'm channeling energies for the messages for the month of february for you it doesn't mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you during the month of february this could be messages that come forward to you that spirit wants you to know at this time but it's not something that doesn't actually manifest or happen for some time down the road okay so just keep that in mind i am available for private readings all the information is found in the description box below this video um, you can also find me on uh, social media. I'm on Facebook at Divine Conversations 2711. I'm also on Instagram at Divine underscore Conversations. I do welcome you to reach out to me there. However, if you are looking to book a personal reading, I do not recommend that you use Facebook. Um, I don't even really recommend that you use Instagram. However, Instagram is a more viable option. I am able to get to the messages more quickly, but my dm situation is just full of all kinds of messages so there's still a possibility that i might miss your inquiry and with that said even if you were to say to reach out on instagram for a personal reading i'm still going to defer you back to email so if you would like to get a personal reading with me check the description box below my email can be found there along with all of the readings that i offer their description and their prices and then email me directly. My email address is divineconversations2711 at gmail.com. But again, that can be found in the description box. Again, I am going to, even if you were to reach out on Instagram, I am still going to defer to your email address because I would at least need your email address to send you an invoice for the reading. So you're better off just skipping a step and emailing me, emailing me directly and I'll get you set up for a personal reading. Yeah? Cool. So the Oracle deck that we're using for this month is the Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. I really, really enjoyed using this this um, this deck this month. Um, it was a deck that was provided by a viewer. Thank you so much for sending this in. I really appreciate it. For those of you that are interested in donating Oracle decks or Tarot decks that you would like to see used on the channel, I do have a PO box that the information for that can be found in the description box as well. Um, if you are going to send a tarot or oracle deck, you might just want to email me really quick and really and check in to see if I have that deck yet, um, so that you know we're not you're not kind of wasting money sending a repeat deck. Okay, um, but the one thing I want to say about this deck is that 
uh, of this Oracle deck is that the author speaks in first person kind of often. So just keep that in mind when I'm saying, when I'm reading through the, the, the definition on the, in the book and I'm speaking, I'm saying things like I, it's coming from the perspective of the author herself. Okay. It's not me speaking personally. It's the author and her narrative. It's sometimes it's in the first person, but it's great. I mean, it still worked really well. The messages were beautiful for that. So I'm excited to, for you to guys, for you guys to see them. And for those of you that are new to the channel and are wondering, I'm not the type of reader that's looking into the situation to be nosy. My intention with these readings here is to bring forward the best messages for you that you need to hear at this time so that you can make a better decision for your life moving forward so that you can have a greater opportunity to be more discerning for your life and for the where you want to go and potentially what could be coming on down the pipeline for you. If at any moment you find that the, something is resonating with you and you don't quite like the way that sounds, you don't want to continue manifesting with that or manifesting that, you have the opportunity to change that manifestation by changing your thought process, then changing your beliefs and changing your alignment to the situation, okay? So just keep in mind, for those of you that are here trying to snoop, trying to get into people's minds, thinking that I'm trying to get into somebody's head, I'm not your guy, all right? There are plenty of people that are out here that may be doing that, but I'm not here for that. Also understand that I do not base my channelings on love specifically. If love comes out, then love comes out. I am not resistant to that. However, if you're looking for specific love readings, then this is probably not the, the channel for you. I do have moments where I will do uh, you know, a love live session here or there, but ultimately the focus of my channel or the focus of Divine Conversation is to bring you greater guidance and understanding about, well, to bring you greater guidance, of, or, I'm sorry, <laughs> to bring you greater understanding about what is going on in your life, the energies that are surrounding you, and then bringing you guidance in, in terms of handling those energies and making the best decisions for yourselves. Yes? Okay, I believe that's it. So without further ado, let's get to it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Mwah. Hello, Pisces. Welcome to your reading for February 2020. Thank you so much for tuning in. So let's get into your pre-shuffle energies here. You have the King of Swords with the Page of Wands and the Nine of Wands. Overall energy is the King of Cups. Uh, I'm going to be honest, guys. I feel like there is some sort of connection between you and another person in which you're going to be communicating about. Pisces, I'm going to say that I feel like you are the king of cups here. Doesn't have to be that way. This is a general reading. This could be the other person, or it could be both of you, okay? Um, there's a level of, of understanding that's coming into play here in which someone may be communicating their feelings or communicating about something or re-identifying themselves and the other per or, 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 okay, or, or sending a message out there, but then the other person is kind of guarded, is unsure of the situation, is trying to be like, well, look, I mean, like, let's let's call a spade a spade here. I feel like this other person, maybe even you, but this guarded person, whomever is, is represented by the King of Swords here, has been through a lot. Nine of Wands. Um, and is not really quite willing to back down or give up just yet. Or maybe not give up, but give in just yet. Now, this could be a situation in which someone here has really grown into a sense of emotional maturity and is looking to set the record straight here, maybe draw a line in the sand. Um, there could be the, this person, whomever this is, this could be you, Pisces, or it could be the other person. But with this Page of Wands energy, um, they may be identifying themselves in some way, re-identifying themselves in some way showing you a side of themselves that maybe they haven't shown in the past or maybe haven't even spoken of yet. It might be something that they've hidden. It may not be something that they've really actually tried to hide, but actually have never really discussed or opened up about. And so they could be opening up about it now, or this could be you. This could very well be a same-sex relationship. Okay, that's all I'm getting there. I mean, ultimately, this this feels like a good thing because what I'm hearing, Pisces, is drawing a line in the sand, making boundaries known, setting um, intentions maybe for the future. Interesting. Um, 
getting it, it really just feels like an energy of getting on the same page with each other or understanding where each other stands again drawing the lines drawing your lines in the sand and i'm not really feeling like this is either a good or a bad thing now this is a general reading so take it as it resonates and depending on your individual situation you know um it uh, pff, it could be good it could be bad who knows i'm not here to tell you that i'm just saying that there is uh, this could even be a business situation this could be anything you guys all right so if that resonates with you just take it take it as it resonates and fit it into your life as you feel is best okay mm, it's six of wands with the queen of swords here now all right so there is maybe some sort of victory here we have the queen the, the the queen to that king of swords okay so uh, a meeting of the minds this could be a meeting of masculine and feminine energy that coming together and 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 creating a whole new thing who knows who knows anyway um i uh, what i want to say yeah with the six of wands is still at the bottom of the deck what i really want to say here is with that queen of swords that came out with the six of wands that i just saw um truth honesty integrity like really setting the record straight is going to bring forward some sort of victory here for you whether it's with this person that you're communicating with or whether you're like drawing the line in the sand with this person saying look i really can't cross that line right now because of x y and z ultimately standing truthfully standing honestly and being discerning and not giving in not letting your boundaries go is going to bring some sort of uh, uh recognition or um Ooh, there might be drama. I just heard that with drama. Okay. Um, but there also could be some sort of reward or victory here with the Six of Wands. All right. It might be challenging. It really might be, especially since I just heard drama there. You know, it might be a little bit of a challenging situation. But ultimately, if you stick to your guns, it's going to be successful for you. Okay. Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Pisceans, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of February 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Pisces, I'm going to give this five shuffles and then we'll see what we've got for you. One. For my Piscean sun, moon, rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of February 2020, that was two. This is three. This is four. And we have five here, Pisces. Whoops. Ooh, no, we're trying that again. Try that one more time, Pisces. There it is. All right. All right, cool. Let's cut the deck here. Boop. All right. Overall energy for you, Pisces. We've got the High Priestess. So there is... Mm, there's a level of the unknown of the unknown here and i really get the feeling that someone is really going to be divulging some sort of secret there's something that's going to be conveyed or expressed here there's some sort of secret i feel like is being is is you are being enlightened to or maybe even awakened to it may be something that was hidden beneath the surface and it's been there all along but again like i said in the pre-shuffle if you may not necessarily have um, discussed it. And it may not be something that was actively trying to be hidden, and yet it wasn't clear, it wasn't discussed, so now... Okay, there's also maybe some sort of higher wisdom coming into play. Some of you may be dealing with an activation of your psychic abilities because the High Priestess is you know, it does represent uh, psychic ability and whatnot, whatever, okay. Underneath the High Priestess is the Queen of Pentacles. You know, what I'm getting with this, Pisces, is this Queen of Pentacles energy is someone is, what I literally just heard is someone is holding space for someone else. And that might be the energy that, wow, that might be the energy that they are divulging to you or that they are sharing with you. 
It also could be an energy of, you know, someone speaking truthfully in like, say if this is like a romantic relationship and someone wants to like take something a little deeper, a little further, the other person may be in an energy of conveying what it is they truly want out of a relationship or why if something may not work for them or something like that. Interesting. Underneath the, the 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 Queen of Pentacles is the Ace of Pentacles. So, but then there could be an energy of you know someone trying to make an offer to so this Queen of Pentacles here, and underneath the Queen of Pentacles, I'm sorry, the Ace of Pentacles is the Nine of Cups. All right, Pisces. There could be an offer coming, and this actually this offer could be coming in from someone that you may have been holding this space for. Like what I'm getting here is this queen of pentacles is like holding, you know, is holding her pentacle. Okay, that's her pentacle. But it also could be you having intentions to hold space for something or someone for a specific, oh, I heard a specific job offer, um, or maybe a specific partner, romantic partner or whatnot. And here comes that pentacle that you may have been holding space for, or here comes an offer. Sure, this may be an offer, and yet um, maybe it's not the right offer, or maybe it's not the right pentacle, and that in, and that encourages or, or influences you to say, well, actually, I'm holding space for this specifically. Ultimately, whom, whatever you or someone else is holding space for, you're gonna get it, because you do have the Nine of Cups. Now, here's the other thing with the Nine of Cups. I'm getting an energy of indulgence. So this might be a situation in which someone is no longer wishing to indulge in certain activities or certain endeavors or whatnot, whatever, or with certain people because of the fact that they are holding this space or, or being in this. I, I'm, I'm really getting an energy of like wifey status or like the wife and mother with the queen of pentacles. And you may be, it may very well be a situation where you're kind of like saving yourself for marriage or you're in some sort of abstinence. And ultimately by you holding on to that, and this could be very well, this could very well be a higher calling that is, um, influencing you to be in this space but ultimately you're going to get what it is you're really seeking but you got to stick to your guns here okay now pisces keep in mind this could be you that's expressing this or this could be someone else that maybe say you want to make some sort of offer to that could be expressing this to you okay i i feel i uh, oh. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, let's get into the rest of the reading here. Uh, first half, second half, you could look at this as the first half, second half of your month, or you could just look at it as the first half, second half of your reading. Take it however it resonates for you. Yes? First set of surrounding energies for you, Pisces, in the first half of the reading, you have the Two of Swords. Okay. Um, there is some sort of indecisiveness here, but I feel like this is, in, what I'm hearing is this is indecisiveness of from the past. And unfortunately, what I'm also picking up on here for some of you is that that indecisiveness could have been the deal breaker for you, could have been something that kind of like only led you to miss out on something that could have been really potentially really great. However, I, uh, ultimately, if you if something isn't planning out or isn't working out for you the way that you had expected or the way that you had wanted it to, then Ultimately, that is for the re for the for a reason. It's most likely for the right reasons. And if there was some sense of indecisiveness in the past that has kind of kept you from, we'll say, like making a commitment to someone, then um, ultimately that was a lesson you needed to learn in terms of this situation. Okay, Two of Swords is coupled with the Fool. Mm, yeah, there was indecisiveness, or maybe there is still even a level of indecisiveness in terms of taking a leap of faith with someone or something. And I'm just going to say it as, it as I hear it, you might have missed out on the opportunity here in this circumstance, but ultimately, if that's the situation and you really learned your lesson here, hopefully you won't make that same mistake again in the future. Now, this could also be a current energy of you being indecisive about taking some sort of leap of faith. And that could potentially be the discussion or the conversation that was coming out in the beginning of the reading, in like the pre-shuffle. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Pisces, in the first half of your reading, you have 
the nine of pentacles. Okay. Independence. Um, someone might be, may be, or may have been holding on too tightly to their independence for fear of losing themselves in another person. That could very well be why you may have been or maybe even still are in this energy of indecisiveness when it comes to taking a leap of faith. It's like, I don't wanna lose my sense of self. And that could be a strong fear for you, Pisces, because that actually may be uh, an element that you've struggled with. I mean, I, I, that makes perfect sense for Piscean energy. And it may even be that you finally found this sense of independence and autonomy and now you have maybe this suitor coming to, into your life or you have this love interest in your life or something that's coming into your life that, you know, could potentially cause you to lose this sense of independence. But again, this just feels like a fear. The Nine of Pentacles is coupled with the Three of Wands. Now, this also feels, at this point, with this Three of Wands energy, this feels like an energy of, okay, well, I'm in this solid, independent state. Where do I go from here? It's like you're trying to make a decision in terms of how you want to express yourself moving forward, um, keeping the ball rolling, potentially, because this the Three of Wands energy is... Uh, you know, like waiting for a return on an investment, waiting for your ships to come in. For me as a reader, it does sometimes feel like, you know, having made a decision and having already invested in something and now continuing to keep the ball rolling. Okay. I'm feeling an energy of someone being in this nine of pentacles energy and saying, I literally just heard, I want a partner. I want a mate. But how do I do that without losing myself within them? Interesting. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Pisces. Boundaries. <laughs> the seven of wands. Wow. Wow. For some of you, you're having to redefine your boundaries. I'm hearing having to come to terms with them on a, on a deeper level. Understanding who you truly are inside. To be quite honest, Pisces, understanding yourself on a deeper, in, more, in, more, more intimate level will absolutely help you to maintain your identity in the face of another person's energy. And I feel like for some of you, that is in fact something that you're willing to, needing to, or desiring to work on, okay? Your uh, Seven of Wands is coupled with <laughs> the world. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, so whatever this situation or circumstance is for you, Pisces, it's helping you to really redefine your boundaries. It's helping you to bring to a close an energy or a situation or a, a circumstance or a, even a situationship in which... Maybe boundaries were either too strong and too rigid or maybe the exact opposite. Ultimately, Pisces, whatever, whatever isn't working out for you here, because that's a strong message that I'm getting from this, whatever isn't working out for you here ultimately is bringing a change into your life that is going to serve you for the better. So don't lose hope is what I just heard, okay? Because ultimately, this is serving you. It's going to make you stronger. It's going to set you up for whatever it is to come next. Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Pisces, you have the hanged man. There you go. And this is your energy here too, okay, with the hanged man. This, represent, this is representative of Piscean energy, but this is literally what I was just talking about. Whatever it is that is happening here for you right now, Pisces, is helping you to understand yourself better. It's helping you to understand others better. It's helping you to understand maybe the laws of the universe better, the law of attraction, the law of attraction specifically. So for some of you that have maybe attracted a situation into your life that you were really super indecisive about and didn't know how to approach. And so you were, you were kind of like on the fence for the longest time, but now you're ready to move forward. And unfortunately this isn't, it's, it, it isn't the right timing or it isn't the right person is what I heard specifically. 
ultimately it's serving to help you be better. And now that you have learned this lesson, you can move forward and really attract what it is that is in alignment with who you are or what you want, okay? In fuller, greater alignment to not just to you as in your energetic state, but what it is you truly desire. And I really do feel like whatever it is you're experiencing here, you are coming to understand what it is you truly want on a stronger, deeper level. Your, I'm sorry, the hanged man is coupled with, the, damn, yo, the wheel of fortune. Holy shit, man. <laughs> you know, sometimes I really, I really surprise myself sometimes with how much I can pick up from one card and then the next card out really corroborates it. But there you go. The wheel of fortune, a change in karma, a change in the cycle awakening awareness that is allowing you to see differently to see through the karma and to make a change so ultimately what this really feels like here pisces is your alignment is changing and it's shifting into it's like you're literally in the process of lining up with exactly what it is that you want and now that you have gone through this, this this experience or maybe even this awakening you are consciously more consciously aware of what it is that you want so that means that you can get into greater alignment with it and i really do feel like for whomever this is resonating for this may not be for all of you but i feel for some at least that whatever is coming next is exactly what it is that you've been working towards and exactly what it is that you've been looking for even though you may not necessarily be aware of it there's also an energy of not really recognizing how this has helped you get into alignment until you're already there. Okay. Okay. This is really cool, Pisces. So let's get into the second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies for you, Pisces. We have, ooh, there's that Queen of Swords again. But see, this is you needing to or getting ready to embody the energy that is going to keep you in alignment. This is discernment. So this is you f like finally truly maybe knowing what it is that you want and not allowing yourself to entertain anything else. So let's say let let's let's say for 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 hypotheticals we're talking about romance and we're talking about love. And instead of keeping your options open and entertaining a bunch of different people, you know, testing the waters and whatnot and just seeing what it is that you want, instead you're putting some sort of laser focus on the type of partnership or the type of partner or the type of lover or whatnot, whatever that you actually truly want, what it is you truly desire out of a relationship and then staying in alignment with it and no longer entertaining anything else that does not fall directly in line with what it is that you want. This is a beautiful energy, Pisces, but for some of you, I feel like this is super challenging. And it might be kind of heartbreaking. It might be. But ultimately, it's going to get you what you desire here. So work through this as best you can to the best of your ability, okay? The Queen of Swords is coupled with... The f Whoa! The Five of Wands! This, <laughs> this is literally an energy of competition of people fighting for you or you fighting for others you being you know what i mean like so let's take our romance situation this could be an energy where you have a bunch of different suitors around you all vying for your attention and you know none of them fit the bill so you're just gonna have to say look guys i'm just gonna have to stop you here because i'm not gonna go ultimately i know i'm not gonna go with any of you now this doesn't have to be just romance it's a hypothetical so this is a general reading so take it as it resonates for you this could be a number of different job offers this could be a number of different creative projects a number of different partnerships in creativity or, or work or whatnot whatever that you might be trying to juggle to see which one really is going to work out and then once that one works out you can drop all the rest to be quite honest I, what i feel is best for you pisces is to just drop the ones that you know you don't even want to be a part of to begin with why even entertain it if you know you don't want to be a part of it right very interesting pisces second set of surrounding energies for you in the second half of your reading here you have the ten of pentacles Boop. lesson learned and seen there you have it right there 
this Ten of Pentacles, uh, for me as a reader, the Ten of Pentacles does represent completing of a life lesson and moving on, being able to move on to the next one. So you could see this as like graduating uh, fifth grade or graduating uh, sophomore, junior year, of high school, something like that, you know. But in this life, you know, there are the, the lessons keep coming. You don't ever really stop learning. Okay, so that's great. But this is the completion. Lesson has been learned. Moving towards lesson, a lesson being learned, moving towards completing this course and now graduating to the next one. You have, you're going from the 10 to the ace. The ace being in your overall energy. So this really, this ace of pentacles could be something that's coming forward towards you. Either, ooh, okay, well, I just heard, I was going to say either in the month of February or sometime on down the, 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 the pipeline, but I did specifically hear in the month of May. So for some of you, the month of May could be when you are ready to embark on this new journey. You're ready to step into this new lesson. You get this, you get this, um, this offer, this job offer, this romantic offer, whatnot, whatever. But you're going to have to hold your own, Pisces. You're going to have to stick to your guns here, Pisces. Queen of Swords with the Five of Wands. Because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, the universe is going to test you. They're going to, you're, it's like, it's like, we'll say for those, for whomever that May message was for, and maybe that's just a hypothetical, I don't know, but I'm going to, what I'm seeing with that is, and take this as it resonates for you, between February and May, as you complete this, this situation, it's like you're going to be in final exams, where the universe is going to bring you certain elements or certain things that are going to, you know, be a recreation of the, of the cycle that you're looking to close out. And you're going to have to discern. You're going to have to say, well, no, I learned that lesson, and I'm not trying to entertain that any longer. Right? There you have it. This is very good, Pisces. Ten of Pentacles is coupled with Temperance. Excellent. This is alchemy. This is the, this is the new you. Okay. So while oh come on, focus please. So while you were working towards, there we go. So while you've been working towards oh no no okay. While while you've been working towards learning this lesson, right? All of the all of the ingredients were collected, were um, generated, were developed now it's kind of like you're in this final baking process right so we'll call this we'll call you a cake say and all of the all of the ingredients and everything were being assembled and put together and so now we put that cake in the oven for the final process the final cook the final zhuzh if you will <laughs> yeah i like this pisces your challenge in the second half of your reading here Oh, the sun. Your challenge is belief, Pisces. Your challenge is believing that everything is going to be okay. Your challenge is believing that this is exactly what you needed to experience so that you ultimately can, in fact, get what it is that you want and that you desire so, so much. Your challenge is believing that you absolutely can achieve this. You might fall into a little bit of a darkness. It might feel a little dark for you for a little bit. Pisces, but that's really just your ego. The sun is shining. There is illumination here. The sun is coupled with the hermit. Now, this is what is making it. This is why, and, and this makes a lot of sense. So, this is why the sun being in your being here in this position is challenging, because you're having to come to terms with some things within yourself. You're having to like maybe fess up about about maybe a little little bit of narcissism or um you know about what it is you truly want and truly desire out of life and you may have to yeah pisces you may have to fess up to the fact that maybe you potentially missed out on an opportunity because you weren't because of your ego and not really being ready to i don't know settle down or um open up in that sort of way but you know you could have been lying to yourself about why that truly why you were truly expressing yourself in that way so yeah that can be a bit of a challenge i mean you're gonna have to really face yourself you're really gonna have to look at some things that maybe you've been i want to say desperately avoiding but ultimately it's beautiful and it's a good thing because it's bringing illumination into your life which then can lead to transformation the only way you can transform out of something, Pisces, is if you are absolutely, brutally, blunt, honest with yourself about it. You face it head on. 
and say, okay, this is something that I want to change about myself. But you can't make a change of something unless you're aware of it. And here is that awareness. Beautiful. But yeah, that, oh yeah, okay, that's challenging, Pisces. Yes, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Closing message or potential outcome for you here, Pisces, in the second half of your reading you have. There it is, right there. Truth and blunt honesty. Wow. Ace of Swords is coupled with the Queen of Cups now. Well, isn't this beautiful? So the Queen of Cups is compassion, is honesty, is truthfulness, is um, unconditional love, is, uh, I'm hearing satisfaction, okay, um, is empathy. But also what I'm getting with the Queen of Cups is a level of boundaries because the Queen of Cups does represent, you know, it represents officially, it represents Cancerian energy, but but also when the Queen of Cups is not negatively, is negatively aspected, she has absolutely no boundaries. And what I feel like here is, a this really feels like a redefining of boundaries. Now also, if she's negatively aspected, she could have way too strong boundaries and be way too closed off and not really open up about her emotions or how she truly feels about something. All right. So what I kind of feel like here, Pisces, is this is an energy of you getting down to the nitty gritty of what how you truly feel. And maybe finding the unconditional love or compassion within to allow yourself to express it, to allow yourself to feel it, to allow yourself to be it even. Understanding what it is you truly want out of life is something that I'm also hearing. And not being afraid to let yourself go after it or explore it. The strongest message I'm, message I'm getting here, Pisces, is with this Ace of Swords and the Queen of Cups is understanding how it is you truly feel. And working through that. Which is beautiful. All right, Pisces. So now... We are going to get your oracle guidance. And you know what's so interesting? We had the king of cups and the king of swords. We had a lot of king energy in the beginning of the reading and in the, like the pre-shuffle. And now we have all the queens. We have the queen of swords and the queen of cups here. That's really interesting. Lots of mirroring. Balance. Harmonious union. Balance between the masculine and the feminine within. Beautiful Pisces. Last shuffle. Okay. Here we go, Pisces. Let's get your oracle guidance here for the month of February 2020 for my Pisceans. Oh, wow. Okay. This is really, really nice. You have card number 20. Waning Gibbous Moon. I'm sorry. Waning Gibbous 4. Beauty. Beautiful. <laughs> See what this says. Okay, this is a little bit of a long one, but I'm going to read it anyway. <clears throat> Here we go. Beauty is like medicine. It can heal even the most broken spirit. Beauty is everywhere in nature. Just look. Beauty comes in many forms, and when we, uh, uh, I'm sorry, and we can choose to find it. Yes, beauty comes in many forms, and we can choose to find it. I love how I look. Rid yourself of clutter and what you find disagreeable. Quote, I see beauty everywhere, and it raises my vibration. One of the high needs in my life is that of beauty. I need to be exposed to what I find beautiful, often to be at my best. You might find that a strange need, but it's far from uncommon, especially among creatives and artists. Beauty to me isn't lots of makeup or fancy skincare or a society's current beauty ideal. For me, beauty is nature and having things I find beautiful in my environment. I look around as I write and I can see the inky dark clouds racing across the violent a, uh, racing across a violent sky, excuse me, and the birds riding the wind and it's beautiful. 
On my desk is a small piece of glass a friend made for me and a small bowl full of summer frangipani. frangipani, frangipani. My feet rest on a hand-woven carpet of desert colors and my toenails are painted a shimmering turquoise, my favorite color. All of these are expressions of beauty to me. They raise my mood. They give joy to my eyes, my heart, and my mind. Everyone can experience beauty every day if they choose to look. One of the important differences between the ancient pagan and modern idea of beauty is that the old ways state there is a need for the core of the self to be developed and strengthened to enable and foster true beauty. This is an important two-way double punch as there is a strong mind-body connection when it comes to, so sorry, strong mind-body connection when it comes to both beauty and vitality. Yes, while it is acceptable to use therapies that treat or beautify externally, it's equally important to stop bad habits detrimental to health that will interrupt the most effective ex treatments, I'm sorry, that will interrupt the good you are doing. For example, you could be using the most effective treatments on the market to nourish your skin, but if you can't give up smoking, there is a finite level of health that your skin can achieve. The unbalanced first world ideal of beauty is at its zenith right now, with more people than ever before under undergoing a normalizing plastic surgery and injectable chemicals. Everyone has an individual right to decide how they wish to, their body to look and adopt an idea of physical beauty. Mm, excuse me. However, it's the source of the influence that is worrying. Who told a woman who has altered her appearance that there was something wrong with her face, eyes, smile, expression in the first place? Who had the audacity to say, you are not enough because she had some smile lines? Think about it. Who is making women, in particular, so fearful? Who or what wants you to question yourself and the very essence of how you interact with the world and why? Who wants you to be the same as everyone else and less of who you are? Society? Some marketing guy from for big cosmetics? A retouched spokes model? Real beauty is hypnotic, yet in reality has less to do with youth than it does with the spirit coming through the skin. The word charisma comes from the Greek charis and ma, meaning the spirit shining through. Each of us possess a unique beauty, one that gives us confidence if we recognize it. Each of us is desirable. Each of us perfect, perfectly formed to be what we want to be. But should we become too obsessed by the external, something that is, after all, fleeting, we may become unhappy and chase an ideal that is impossible to, hope, to uphold. Beautiful message. And the comparison stone or metal for this card is Larimar. So if you want to get some Larimar, that's spelled L-A-R-I-M-A-R. If you want to get some Larimar to help you through this, I highly encourage you to do so. But with that said, there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fantastic month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yeah? Take care. Bye.